Okay, so uh, we did this last year, and it was a smaller room with more people in it, which in itself sends a signal to me. Now, let's see how, how we, we get on. Um, I'll assume that nothing else is going to happen there. But So last year, uh, there was no camera. This year, there is a camera. Um, but I understand that it's not going to be streamed live. So, uh, However, there will be a record of, of the discussion. Um, I think one of the best things about last year is that we made it very clear that it's an engineering discussion. So um, we're aiming just to explore, as engineers, what the state of collaboration around automotive software is. Um, I think that makes it unusual versus some other panels that you might see in, in other places because there's no marketing. Um, I've been told I'm under strict instructions not to talk about the politics, so I won't do that. Um, we're just going to talk about the technicality of, of what's actually going on in terms of how people are working on software for automotive systems. Okay? Um, the result of that is that all of the gentlemen here are actual engineers. They write code. They've, they've been involved in real systems. Um, they're not here to sell product or, or present companies or anything like that. We're just going to talk about the realities of what's going on. Okay? Um, and I think without any further ado, I'll briefly introduce myself and then ask um, each of the panel members just to give you a sense of, of who they are and uh, why they think they've been gathered here. Okay, so I'm Paul Sherwood. I am the CEO of CodeThink. I, I think I'm one of the few uh, CEOs that actually writes code. I know, I know there are lots of those in Silicon Valley, but um, I'm one of the weirdos, so I, I talk as well as writing code. And probably that's why I'm on this panel. Philippe, please. Hi, everyone. So my name is Philippe Koval, and I'm working for Samsung um, UK. And uh, I'm part of the open source group of Tizen of uh, Samsung, and I used to work on Tizen and also on uh, IoT uh, project. And I have a little experience about Tizen AVI because I worked before on it. And also on uh, AGL and Genevi. This is a two projects we have. Uh, maybe Leon can explain one of them. Thank you, Philip. So uh, my name is Leon Genevi, and I'm a senior software engineer at Consulco Group. I'm also an open source enthusiast, and thanks to my work, I have the opportunity to contribute both to Automotive Grade Linux and Geneva Development Platform. I'm currently working on the integration of uh, the SOTA project and Oystre in Automotive Grade Linux, and this is a work funded by ADS Advanced Telematic Systems. It's a really exciting project that Arthur can mention more about it. Sure. Um, so my name is Arthur Taylor. I'm CTO and co-founder of a company called Advanced Telematic Systems. Um, we develop software for uh, automotive companies and their suppliers, and I'm a, a CTO who's regularly asked to stop writing code. Um, <laughs> we have been heavily involved in AGL and Genevieve for a long time now, since 2013, um, sometimes working on user management, more recently working on uh, software updates, which is how we come to collaborate with Leon and a couple of the other guys here, um, especially on the AGL reference platform and GDP. Uh, hello, I'm Stefan Destu. Um, I'm a CTO at uh, IoT.bzh, um, which is a, a consulting company, which is a kind of reboot of the team working on Tizen uh, for three years in Brittany, in France. And um, we restarted by working for Renaissance. And uh, more specifically, even if uh, Renaissance is funding us uh, and is a member of Genevi and AGL, uh, we are mostly, our team is mostly dedicated to AGL. And uh, uh, so well, we are also working and, and, and looking uh, in details on, on Genevi and to, to see how we can find some, uh, some conversions on, on many domains. Uh, so uh, software update is one domain, for example. So we also work with Leon and Arthur uh, for that. And IoT uh, is also one of another domain which, uh, where we can share a lot of things between projects. So um, my, my role in uh, uh, IoT.bzh is mostly release engineer. So I'm writing code, <laughs> but as a CTO, that's it. Marvelous. Okay. I've got, I'm, I'm mic'd, I can talk whenever I feel like it. 
Okay, so another thing that I think we got right last year was we actually invited members of the audience to speak. Um, and we, that was both questions and comments. Uh, and I've got a few of the kind of key points from last year that I intend to ask later in this panel to see whether we've done better or worse and, and whether the, the issues are the same or, or have changed, okay? But basically, I'm gonna ask broadly the same questions this year that I asked last year. Uh, we have some continuity because Arthur was on the panel last year, so he can hopefully keep us sane and remind us of what was said. Um, but the other three guys uh, are all new. I mean, I've, I've not actually met them before. One, one of the key points I would make is that there's four different companies here, but they have, I think, all collaborated with each other, right, over this last year. So you've probably got a better interrelationship set. Yeah, at some point, yeah. Yeah, okay, fantastic. So uh, if I could start with you, Philippe, um, one of the key questions is just if you could maybe give me some examples of the kind of highs and lows of your experience collaborating in automotive, you know, what, what's been best and what's been worse? Okay. Um, I think the, the good thing is that um, I, I'm not an automotive engineer. I'm just uh, discovering this uh, with Tyson before and I had no special experiences and I was working from the software side, not especially yep. in relationship with the automotive maker. So I think the good thing is that they are adopting development from open source projects, Linux-based projects, so somehow if they are interested in to Linux and um, their related workflows, so I think this, those workflows were approved before by other projects, and if they are um, following something that works, so yep. that's uh, the good thing. And the bad thing, I would say, but um, this is not, uh, this is just an impression, um, uh, my personal appreciation, I don't have experience it. Yep. Those uh, industries spe have spe specific uh, workflows that uh, on long-term long projects and, uh, and this doesn't fit with uh, live patching code uh, that, like we do in open source. So probably there is some un alignment between those two methods mm -hmm. and uh, somebody has to sort it out. So, so to say this in other words, um, there, uh, making products and making software platform uh, is not the same thing. Yep, I think that's a very fair point. Okay, thank you, Philippe. Leon, same question to you. Highs and lows. Well, let's say with let's start with the highs. Well, it's it's really fantastic that both AGL and Geneva Development Platform are open source project in the full meaning of this. Mm -hmm. So. Even if you are um, a software developer without experience in the automotive industry, but you have experience with open source software, you know what, what is Git, you know what is GitHub, you know what is Garrett, you can start contributing right away. Mm -hmm. So this is fantastic. Um, you can very easily uh, fix or add a, uh, fix a bug or add a new feature and get it merged into the upstream. Um, I would like to highlight the, the work that we have been doing on a platform such as uh, Raspberry Pi, which is very popular among the community. And we shared a lot of knowledge uh, between the two platforms to get it working there. Right. Because there are a lot of similarities uh, between the platforms. Uh, from the downsides, well, um, I would uh, say the same as uh, Philippe. It's platform and product is, um, is different things. Right. Uh, it would be great if you have more, more products with these platforms. Yep. <laughs> okay. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Arthur, same question to you, please. Sure. Um, well, I think uh, we've had a, a, an exceptionally happy year contributing to open source collaboratively for automotive. Um, at the start of this year, with Leon's help, we, we got our software into AGL and GDP, and that was very straightforward and smooth, and we were very happy um, mm -hmm. with support from CoveThink and others. Um, and, and so that's been really, really good. We've been delighted by um, how willing and interested people are to hear about open source solutions to critical problems. Sometimes, a couple of years ago, we would get pushback on, you know, why are you doing this in open source? Uh, these days, when we go to customers, 
even if we're talking to engineers and they understand that there might be problems with legal or further up in the business, there's, there's really, I feel like, a broader acceptance that um, open source for non-differentiating parts of the stack is, is a really good way to go. Um, and we felt really supported to bring some of that software um, deeply integrated into these platforms. So that's been really great. Um, in terms of lows, um, I'm not supposed to talk about the politics, so I won't. But, oh, go um, on. <laughs> but there are, uh, you know, the frustrating part is always when when you do work and you want to share it and it's it's not accepted or recognised. Um, that's that's always difficult. Um, but I think I think that's that's just the nature of collaboration sometimes. Um, so we've been very happy with the collaborators that we found and when the collaboration has gone smoothly. Right, okay, that's fair. I, and always collaboration is, is complex, isn't it? Because it depends on the people. You know, I, I think uh, some, some groups of people get on better than others and, and you know, it, it's always the way. Yeah, you agree. Um, I would say the pros, uh, high, on the high side, yeah, I would say that collaboration is a, a great point uh, between many experts in different domains because I'm also coming as Philip from a, the open source side, in fact. Yeah, yeah more than the automotive, I'm, I'm more in the embedded world than specifically automotive. And we can see that we need experts in all domains coming from open society, Linux kernel or whatever. Mm -hmm. And also uh, we need automotive experts who give them their feedback. They, they are quite open, I mean, uh, to give their feedback. And um, so th there is definitely some, uh, some projects like AGL and Genevieve where we have uh, many things to share between engineers coming from different worlds. Uh, I would say that's the good point. Um, the bad point would be that uh, we, we could go further, I think. Uh, the community around automotive is uh, mostly uh, the members in AGA and Genevieve. There are car manufacturers, tier ones, uh, but you won't see many students, for example. So, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, this is a kind of open source community, but not in the sense we, uh, we, uh, we call a community usually, I right. mean in the open source world. So I would like to, to see more, uh, more young people being interested in the, such project and, and give them some, some platforms, some cheap platforms, so right. they can experiment, they can contribute, they can develop applications, etc. cetera. So um, that's something we'll try to, to develop in uh, next year. Okay. Um, I would say that in the, in the good points, I think that uh, many OEMs now have uh, taken in account what we tried to push uh, last year, basically the security in automotive in connected cars. Uh, that was something we at IoT.bz we insisted a lot on that and saying that we should build security first inside the system that, that should be shared by all OEMs and tier ones participating to the project. And finally, uh, I don't know if we won, but uh, finally we have some kind of security in AGL. So mm. I would like to see the same, or I mean, uh, maybe in different ways because there is no single solution, but I would like to see the same in Genevieve, for example, mm. uh, to see a security model so that we can compare, we can improve. Uh, having multiple projects is a, is a chance, it's not, uh, if I go on the political field. Uh, ah, we're not in politics here. No, no, I know. Okay. But I would say that it's a chance to have multiple projects because we have things to share. Even, sure. even if there are differences, uh, I think that there are many things in common. I mean, we are both based on Yocto, both based on Linux, both based on many software components. We have the example of software update where, where uh, probably Advanced Telematics wants to have a single component for both projects. So. Uh, it's just one okay. example, but we can find many. All right, now I'm going to throw this to the audience. Um, does anyone care to comment on highs and lows from their point of view? Anyone got anything great to say about automotive collaboration or something they want to highlight as a problem? Don't be shy. Or be shy, that's fine. You know, it's a free, free world. No one? Okay, well, oh, yes, sir, please. Uh, who has the microphone? Yep. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, I worked for a, a company on the automotive uh, uh, environment of, like one year ago for a few months. Okay. So uh, I agree with them in the sense that sometimes the community is not 
open enough, it seems for me. Just It seems like a small community among uh, automakers, but it's yep. difficult from people outside of these companies to really get into mailing list, uh, get into uh, code, get into, I don't know, it's, uh, it's a feeling I had, just uh, wanted to share this. Yeah, okay, that, that's a fair point, I think. And while the mic's passing, I would say that I, I've been working within an automotive company um, that is very positive about open source, but it has some basic IT issues. Um, it's hard for their people to access IRC. It's hard for their people to be on mailing lists and those kinds of things. So there are still some relatively low technical barriers that, that are getting in the way, as well as the, the historical culture. Yes, sir. Um, so I hope, hope my comment is not too much on the political side, mm -hmm. because uh, I see there's a lot of collaboration, and that's very nice, to also on, on researching and, and trying how to make use of new technologies, M many of those are coming on open source, yep. on, on all levels, on the devices, on, on, on the car, on the cloud applications, whatever. Um, but uh, this thing will not scale, is my opinion, because in the end the complexity is very high, that was your starter. Yep. And uh, uh, so it will not work that every car vendor and I don't know whoever will develop the software by its own, the same piece of software, the same functionality. Mm -hmm. uh, and also like the car vendors work today, they uh, rely a lot on, on to collaborate with uh, other companies to deliver this stuff, the software. Yep. And um, uh, also the communication on this collaboration gets more and more complex. And this actually requires to get uh, standardization on the functional level mm -hmm. and that's something where I have not seen any progress and, and maybe you have from the software side <laughs> right. seen okay. more, but that would be my my downside so that okay uh, it's some, it's well, I, I'm, I'm gonna take that and put it directly yeah. to the panel so it, uh, if I understand you correctly you're saying that you, f you fear that the current model does not scale and that you need you think we need to have more standardization in the open is that correct? Philip? what do you think? I can try to take this one. Um, so for, from the software side, um, we are somehow aligned because we are using, Stefan said this, we are using the same software component with different uh, variation, but it's roughly the same. And on top of it, we have the value specifics from one project to another. And this is where we are not speaking the same language. So in terms of security, in terms of... Uh, um, resource management and so on. So maybe there is not enough visible progress, but there is one solution and can, I can promote here. This is uh, just about the definition of the, the things. What, what is actually uh, um, um, a speed? What is a, a door lock? What is uh, everything you have in a car? It, it does exist, but there is no a common name to describe it. Yeah. So first, I think f to establish communication, and it also applies with human beings. When you're meeting someone speaking another language, you have to f quickly find the leverage of understanding of the other and, uh, and the, the vocabulary, vocabulary to have an estimation of the vocabulary. And once yeah. you find the reduced uh, dictionary, you can start by talking about yes, no, when, where, how, we, and by just simple um, words, you can start communicating. And I think it's, uh, it's applied between human beings and it, it could apply also with complex uh, system like uh, a car. So maybe, as you said, there is a lot of complexity, but uh, one approach as an engineer is try to divide problem into the smallest uh, part and try to fix them one after one. Yeah, yeah. I think defi def defining uh, what is this, this uh, uh, the resource, I, I'm talking about resource, but I should say the, the simple things, the variable. And once we are aligned on the name of it, we can try to, to put things together. Because in my previous experience in uh, Tyson, for instance, which is a very complex system, there is a lot of specificities, but uh, not, um, not uh, can I cannot say, um, there is a lot of relationship between each component, so that's a, one of the reasons AGL uh, wanted to have a different approach on this project. Yep. So, to say this, if we have very small, reduced definition of what are things and how to interact with them, I think we'll, we'll make a, a small but, but it, important progress. It is about progress, breaking yeah. things down, isn't it, and getting it into smaller components. I mean, I, I would just say, my own view is that the traditional methods don't scale either. 
So, uh, I mean, I, I did a graph a, a few years ago about the, the increase of software in cars, and basically it's just this huge hockey stick. So we went from about a million, car, a million lines of code in a car in 2010 to about 100 million lines now, and it's, it's going off the scale because we're going to do self-driving cars. Um, I know from personal experience that the proprietary methods that people are using don't scale to those levels either. Um, so at least th there are some very large open source projects. There are projects with thousands of engineers that are very effective at cutting code. But I, I, in a way, it feels like the automotive collaboration is still early, isn't it? We're, we're still trying to establish the body of work and get even the vocabulary right of, of, for, for some of this stuff. So, but I, I, I would gently say that I don't think there's a magic solution in private either. Um, you know, the scaling problem for cars is, is a significant one anyway. We, we now have just much bigger, more complex projects to do. Yep. Um, I'm going to try and move on because we're, we're about half an hour to go. So let's um, crack on with. Um, can I ask, um, I'm going to move on. Leon, what do you see are the hot technical topics from an engineering perspective now versus a year ago? What, what has arrived that we need to think about? Well, I think this is an easy question. We had like a dozen of talks about software over the air updates. I'm lucky to be working on integration of one of these projects in AGM and Geneva development platform. Right. But m my experience from this conference is that a lot of people are interested in uh, atomic updates of uh, embedded devices. Not, right. on, not, not only in the automotive industry, but in general. Yep. So for me, this is definitely the hot topic right now. Yep, fair enough. Arthur, you're bound to say the same, so I'm going to skip over that unless you've got something different to say. Well, what I was going to say is, I mean, obviously, yeah, it's, it's good validation for what we're doing, that it is sure. such a big topic right now. Um, obviously, what I get asked in my position is what's next, and, and for sure what we see next is, as you said, these advanced driver assistance systems, sensor mm -hmm. fusion, all, all the software at, at, the, at the rest of that hockey stick, um, yeah. because just working out how to deliver the software is only the very first small step to having these billions of lines of codes in vehicles. Yeah, let's hope it's not billions of lines of code. <laughs> Stefan, um, hot topic. Yeah, I would say that um, if we look at the, um, the cooperation between um, uh, car manufacturers, tier ones, etc., on, on, on projects, uh, the goal, I would say to, to answer you, I, I would say that it, it, it could scale because the goal is not to create a full system because you, you need to keep some differentiator for. Uh, the car manufacturer, in fact. Um, so probably the goal would be to, to create the best system which would represent something like 60% of the platform. And let's say you let 40% uh, uh, to the car manufacturer and tier ones to express themselves. <laughs> uh, but the point is that you want some base services to be uh, in, the, in this base platform. So Linux kernel upgrades, um, security model, uh, application framework, uh, all those kind of stuff should be in the, in the, in the core system. And yep. that's our daily work, in fact. We all know that at some point we'll get a navigation system. It's, uh, it's obvious, okay? Uh, but that's not the point. That's why when we show some demos, uh, the point is not to show something very sexy because we don't care really about it. We want to create a system which is robust and we, which can last for 10 years or 20 years, which can be upgraded, etc. So that's a real challenge. And every, everyone is committed to, to work on that, I think. So I, I would say it scales pretty well currently. OK. All right. Again, to the audience, um, does anyone want to comment on hot topics or things that, that we see from an engineering point of view that need to be front and center in our minds? Maybe I have one oh, yeah. thing. Have you heard about Adaptive Autosar or Autosar's Adaptive Platform? Yes, I have. Yes, and I'm working for a company and we are starting with it, with the specification. There is an Autosar consortium and they start with the demonstrator with Yocto. There you have a common language about the build system, about your packages then the Linux kernel, and then some standardized communication middleware that should run on top of this platform. And they are working on it, they are specifying, and they are trying to get whatever is useful. 
and to have a common language between OEMs. So how you develop your software, how you package it, how you make... Okay. Yes. So, it, so is that work is being done in the open then? The, the specification and, and the collaboration is in the open? Or do you have uh, to be an Autozar member? Yeah, I think the SVN is not in the open. SVN? Yes. Did you really say SVN? It's 2016. Yes. What yeah. the fuck? I, today I got a message via WhatsApp that we got our own uh, Bitbucket in the, oh, the, fantastic. from the IT. You just keep right down that line. That's going to be perfect. Git. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Thank you for raising that. Uh, gentleman to your, to your left, uh, to your right, sorry. Um, so I think the next big thing is really the um, over the air update, but um, I mentioned it earlier. It's not a topic of, um, of updating one device, but we are updating an, a network, a complex network in a car. Yeah. And um, the topic of rollback mechanisms and security is the next big thing. And I think there's no common solution until now. Mm -hmm. It could be a topic for standardization, but I think the OEMs and the tier ones don't want to do it in a standardization way because they want to be unique. Well, I, I, I mean, I take your point, but I, I would just say in general, I think the OEMs have, have been slow to understand the scale of the problem they face, and uh, they'll standardize as rapidly as they see a solution because it's, it's hurting some of them now. So. But they are also burned by Autosar, I think. Oh, yeah, fair point. I think there was one more. Was it Agustin? It's not, a, it's not a technical topic, but it affects the root of the technical collaboration, which is the license. I think that, and it's something that is getting worse. Okay. So the fact that uh, as an industry, the OEMs has uh, clearly said that they do not want GPLv3. Right. Um, it's, gonna, it's making things hard, but it will make them even harder. Okay. And it's one of the first times I see an industry forbidding a GPL compatible license. So right. okay. it's, I think that's quite unique. Okay. But that's so the, the problem is probably wider than simply uh, on the automotive uh, market because for any embedded product, as, as soon as you want to create a product, you'll hit this problem. So um, yeah, this is something we, we have to address. We already had the, the problem in, for Tizen, so <laughs> we know to, how to apply some kind of work around. But definitely, this is some extra work, which um, Obviously, we could try to avoid, yeah. Uh, maybe one odd point. Uh, uh, keep going, I, I keep could, going. Yeah. <laughs> just, just something I want to raise because it's quite fresh. Um, well, fresh. Mm, it, it's this year, I think. Uh, it's um, the fact that uh, OEMs will want more and more uh, hypervisors uh, yeah. for their systems yeah. and uh, putting something like uh, a mix of. Uh, GDP or AGL plus Android plus QNX, something like that with three or four displays is something that they are thinking about. So yep. at some point, again, this is, a, uh, this is not that easy because uh, if, if you know a little bit about uh, hyper hypervision, uh, if you want performance, that deserves a lot of work on the driver side and uh, um, but that's good. That's more engineering to do. Yeah, so we still have <laughs> a huge work to be done, so it's yep. good news for us. But um, that definitely a hot point that raised uh, yeah, this I, year. I, we I didn't that, heard about that uh, That's a fair before. point. And I will just give a brief plug for uh, Jailhouse. Um, Siemens have uh, done a lot of work on this kind of tiny hypervisor specifically for that, that kind of use case. And I think that's, that's a very uh, exciting technology. Um, Briefly moving on to the negatives, I mean, that's the, the positive um, things that are exciting. Um, pain points, engineering pain points you've hit over the last year, Philippe. What do you see as the, the kind of things that are still holding us back? Nothing comes to my mind. Mark. Oh, it's all fantastic. <laughs> then moving on, Leon. No, I <laughs> you do the easy projects, do you? Maybe some, some things that could help that, uh, to have a a real roadmap of different projects to things to, to, to try to establish plans and uh, maybe predict what is going on. But uh, as I said before, we adopt uh, open source uh, way to do things. So this conference is perfect to know wh what is uh, the state of each project at a given sure. time. Yep. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay. Thank I'm you. I'm not sure it's answering the question, but uh, it's <laughs> good enough. Thank you. It's an engineering approximation to an answer. Leon. Okay, so in my opinion, 
some I have the feeling that sometimes we're losing too much time in politics in finding the 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 right words in polishing presentation instead of writing software mm -hmm. and speaking about SVN I remember that when I started working 10 years ago uh, I was using SVN I was making core telephony solutions and mobile applications for Symbian and you know what happened with Symbian and the company behind it because exactly 10 years ago the game was changed a new product evolved on the market and Nowadays, I try to think about vehicles, about cars, electric bicycles, and that kind of stuff, like a computer with wheels. And I believe that this is the game changer. Nowadays, it's, uh, people still think about the vehicles as vehicles, but actually they're computers. And another negative thing, that it's more engineering, uh, is the problem that both AGL and Geneva Development uh, Platform are having uh, with the licensing model in Qt, because recently Qt changed the licensing model to uh, GPL and LGPL version 3, starting of, uh, as of version Qt uh, 5.7. And both platforms for the moment are using Yocto layer with Qt uh, 5.6. I hope that's, that uh, this is something that is going to be solved in the near future right. and will find a way to move forward. Okay, okay. thank you, Leon. So you're, e you're echoing what... Um Augustine said that the license actually is going to become a, bo a bottleneck in a way. Yeah, okay. Arthur? Um, I think our biggest pain point, and this isn't a huge surprise, is just the, the scale and the amount of legacy in these organizations. Mm -hmm. you know, we're trying to push modern solutions to problems, and we need to make them work on platforms that are five years old or on microcontrollers where they can't spend an extra penny on a bit of extra flash. Mm -hmm. um, and so we have to have solutions that scale all the way from the most modern Linux systems to um, an 8-bit microcontroller that's been in a system for 20 years, and that, that sure. makes it very difficult to deploy any kind of modernization. Yeah. Okay. There. Stefan? Um, I would say that, yeah, I agree with that, yeah. The, the scale is quite large, so covering everything is, um, is maybe difficult. Um, there is also some things, the continuous integration, etc., is... Uh, is uh, uh, time eater. I don't know if it's a word. We, mm. we eat our time with uh, Yocto migrations and stuff like that. But I think it's, uh, that's life. Um, I would say uh, that I would like to see less politics and more code and more people involved in the code. More bugs. <laughs> you would like to see but more bugs? Yeah, and, definitely. And less, and less politics. Definitely, because that would mean that we have requirements and that we try to follow and we try to solve bugs to, to follow those requirements. Uh, so we lack of sometimes of requirements in uh, maybe some areas or domains where uh, there would be some differences between uh, uh, competitors. I mean, for example, for the ADA systems or uh, leading edge systems in automotive, we don't have many requirements. So uh, we are a little bit blind and mm -hmm. we don't know where to go. And we know that, for example, we, we need some hypervision, uh, hypervisor, as I said before, but uh, what will run on the hypervisor? Will we use KVM or Xen or whatever? What would be chosen by uh, the OEMs? We don't know. We don't have a clear vision. Yeah, and I, I, I think that is a lot down to the history of, of automotive, where obviously there's a tremendous body of engineering um, that's been done, but most of it's still proprietary, and there are lots of people who cannot participate in these conversations because of their NDAs or, or be just because of the culture that they're in. Yeah, and the, the paradox is that uh, the OEMs ask us to uh, to create systems that we could upgrade for 20 years or at least 10 years, but mm -hmm. they don't even know <laughs> what they will do in 20 years. So, well, yeah, how can we very hard. create a system or think about something uh, 20 years before? It's yep. not that easy. Okay. Uh, again, can I throw it to the audience? Anyone got any comments about engineering pain points that they see in automotive? You're much shyer and more quiet than last year. There was a guy, uh, Luke Fahagen, who stood at the back of the room. And some of you know Luke, obviously you're laughing. Um, and we'd been talking for the best part of 40 minutes. And then eventually he said, you guys aren't living in the real world. <laughs> he said, um, you're doing all this stuff in the open, that's fine. And he's an open source guy, you know, big reputation in open source. He said, but the fact is, on my production project, none of what you're doing is relevant at all. Please, go, go ahead. 
it's coming coming back to my point before what you are mentioning so you come you always talk about a little bit bottom up so yeah. we need a hypervisor we need um, these upgrades but but the problem is that these car vendors they want to build something real bigger that's it's more than the the device in the car yeah. there's a cloud there's a fog maybe and 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 uh, again and, and asking for requirements so in the best case even requirements across car vendors that is asking for standardization. <laughs> that's, yes, but can we, get, can we get those requirements into the open? Yeah, but, but that's what, what I'm, I'm coming from, the telecommunications industry. And, right. and, and we have seen in, in the long time I've been working there, a replacement from hardware to software. So we have already hundreds of millions of, of, of software, lines of code of software. Yeah. And, and this transition could scale only to this amount by, by having standardization function on the function level, not, not every, the, the details. So the car vendors have to differentiate, of course. Right. But you need to, on, on, on the high level, architectural level, you need the standardization. Otherwise, and that's something, uh, Which, the, yeah. time, Philippe, time is ripe now. Philip is exactly on your wavelength. Yeah. I think yeah. he agrees with you completely. Yeah. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm resuming what I was uh, saying just before. <laughs> And you yep. ask me the question. So it's official now. You know about maybe the Open Interconnect Consortium. Op Open Interconnect. So this is a group of uh, industry who want to standardize a uh, different uh, domain. And they want to prevent a uh, silo IoT. You know, some, let's say, uh, you, there is no reason that the the technology in your washing machine is uh, different than the one in your car when you can have a common language and uh, something standardized. So, um, for your information, I, I think one month ago a group has been created and it's called the Automotive uh, Working Group in this. Uh, and uh, our mission is to, to define a common model of the car and uh, then how to, to, to interact with it inside the car with uh, home devices or even at the city level, for instance, or even you can think bigger with a cloud and all kind of uh, things. But uh, as an engineer, as I prefer to think smaller and to see if it can scale and then you can imagine something bigger. If you start thinking about uh, so many services and uh, you need s the software to be set up to start doing something, usually, uh, if you're lucky, it happens. If not, uh, you're switching from one project to another. So, but at the moment, we 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 already made some demonstration, and uh, I can share some resource. But I think this can be it can sound stupid, but uh, the definition of uh, what is a car is something interesting uh, for standardization, and especially if it's not done by one company, sh several companies, because people who have the money are the one who have decided who are deciding. So, is a put their money in a common group, then yep. we can expect it to make it real. Okay, so um, I've got broadly two things I want to cover in the remainder. We have about 12 minutes left. I think each of you gets at least a couple of minutes to spell this out. So I'm going to say two things. I'm going to also open this to the audience. Right? Last year, we had um, a few key messages which I undertook to, took, to take back to um, members of the automotive industry and members of the community. It didn't go down well when I took them back, but I will say I'll summarize what I tried to take back. Um, so on last year's um, discussion, we identified that automotive should stop thinking it's special because it's not any different from some other industries that have equally difficult, challenging requirements. You know, telecoms will be one, aerospace, defense, you know, trains. Um, so. Uh, there was a general feeling from the engineering community, including the panel, that uh, we should try to avoid reinventing the wheel in automotive. And uh, there was, as Luke highlighted, but then other people commented, um, a fear that real production projects weren't making very much use of the public work, which called into question how relevant it was and whether there was enough connection. And in a way, this speaks to the comment earlier that product and platform are different and maybe we, we need to bridge that gap. So my two questions to you, and you can choose either one. Um, has anything changed, or is, is there a different message that needs to be taken back to the community this year? Or do you agree with that same one? And if you had the chance to call to action, what would you want to change? 
you know, what would you try to get changed? So first of all, to the audience, is that the same this year? Or has, have things changed? I mean, are there lots of people with production projects based on AGL and Geneva that want to stand up and shout? Or do we still think automotive is too special for its own so, so, so my, that's pretty much my opinion. Automotive is very special because is, is special because uh, the it's high, uh, these things <laughs> are high, uh, highly mobile, very fast, can be very dense, and, and many, many of them out of them. Of course, for other sensors, we will even have uh, two magnitudes more out of them, but there are many cars. So, and, and, and just talking, seeing, looking on the use cases for connected cars, they get really trickled, tricky. They, we need to research a lot and invent a lot to get this done, to get the, feed, uh, the feedback loops for the control uh, okay. across several cars right. to get I, that I, done. I, the I take your point, and I'm sorry I'm yeah. going to cut you off just yeah. because I want, hopefully, to get one new person to speak. Don't be shy. Yes, gentleman at the back, please. And thank you for your help in running that microphone. You're doing a fantastic job. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so my, um, my point is um, the talk was about specifications and the, the creating a platform and so on, but I think what right. really would drive this would be an OEM to stand up and say, okay, I'm going to do a real product with, for example, AGL, and here are the requirements, here is the time schedule, and I want to go SOP in, I don't know, five okay. years or four that's years. A, that's a fair this point. Um, really does anyone care to say that that's already happened? Walt? No. no? Okay. All right, and I, I know that n that's not quite how Geneva came about, but that's a very good point. Thank you for raising that. Okay, so in strange order, Leon, either a call to action or some change in the message from this year. Well, re regarding call to action, I totally agree with the gentleman in the back. OEM, stand up, specify what you want. And make products. And make products. Make real yeah. products. The other cool thing from community point of view that I would add is that it would be great if there is some kind of opportunity that AGL and Geneva development platform could become more useful for individuals, like to, to have an HMI that just works right. with basic use cases and people can grab it, build it, and put it in a kind of their own vehicle on their own risk. Right. Okay. Fair. Because I've heard some people willing to do it. Yep. Okay. Great. Thank you. Arthur? Um, well, my call to action, I guess, um, it's a bit about not reinventing the wheel again, but really automotive companies need to stop competing to develop obvious things that other people in the market already have. You know, we talk to people, especially on the OTA topic, who are super proud of their system, which makes them almost as good as Tesla, so they're going to keep it a secret. And, and they, need to, <laughs> they need to stop doing that. They need to admit that they've lost that battle, work right. with their competitors to build a system that makes Tesla's advantage irrelevant and then move on to differentiating their product. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. Stefan? Um, the key message for me would be to, for the OEMs and TO1s, would be to participate more and give, give use case requirements, anything that would help to envision the future. Um, I would like to, to say to the community, uh, also, this is a, a unique uh, um, option uh, or way to participate to some open source projects, which I, I don't I, I don't agree with you. Uh, automotive is not special at all. There are some specific Except people die in higher <laughs> frequency if we get it wrong. Yeah, yeah but there are all other, other ways to die. So, <laughs> <laughs> as well, I mean. Uh, so, uh, of course, automotive as as any domain, uh, there are specificities, but. I, uh, if you recall what I said earlier, uh, I said that we want to create the base and a Linux kernel is not specific to automotive, in fact. We, we won't put much in, inside inside it, which, uh, which could be specific in, to automotive. Um, so basically, if we have a community of students or uh, researchers, other people even that work in the uh, embedded world, and, uh, for example, we, we live in Brittany, and uh, as you know, uh, there are a lot of sailing boats and, and marine uh, business. And we are in contact with people which are interested But in what we do on AGL, but just to, to, just to grab the BSP and the, the base system to make it work on boats. So that's, that's the, you have the, the same security problems. We'll have the same connectivity, roughly. 
Uh, maybe the security, the safety uh, on the sea is maybe better than on the roads currently. Uh, navigation is sometimes easier, sometimes more tricky, especially in Brittany. <laughs> uh, so, okay, you have commands and differences. So, um, but be sure that uh, if someone participates to, for example, uh, OS3 project to, uh, to make a, a better upgrading system, the whole embedded world will benefit from that. Not on the automotive or aerospace or whatever. Yeah, that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Before I come to you, I'm going to give you the last word. Um, can I just do a quick show of hands? Who does think automotive is special? You, you do. Right. It's about 50 50. Who, who definitely thinks it's not special from the point of view of the software we're doing? So it is literally split 50 50 this time. That, that's very different from last year because there, there was quite some fierce pushback from, from the audience. Um, I would just say that the, the main thing that I've seen a lot of um, press about and talk about over this last year is autonomous software or autonomous driving. And I do think that makes cars different from lots of other use cases now because the, the main thing I fear in terms of the difference between automotive and other industries is we seem to be racing towards some very high-risk technology um, without getting all of the, the fundamentals straight. You know, I mean, and I, I take your point, I mean, looking at telecoms, it is a relatively mature thing, and normally the worst that can happen is that phones, phone calls get leaked and, you know, people get free calls. It doesn't, by default, if we get the technology wrong, start killing people. So. I think it's different in that respect, just in the scale of risk that we are bringing upon ourselves by going higher and higher in, into this fancy functionality. Um, Philippe, I'm going to give you the floor to finish. So you have two things to talk about, uh, either things that have changed since last year or, or, or a new message that needs to be taken back to the industry. I think the, the key message I'm taking from the discussion so far is we would like to see more participation from OEMs. So just a quick show of hands, how many uh, people in the audience are from OEMs? One, two, sorry, hands up again, sorry, I think two, just two, two and a half. <laughs> okay, so it is, a, but there are some, okay. Uh, so we want to see more OEM participation. Uh, I personally still want to see Git, so drop your um, SVN rubbish. Uh, and I would say my key, pain point over this last year has been clear case. Philippe, call to action. Okay. So if the automotive is special, if not, maybe, but if it is special, I can testify that the software is not that special. And uh, the good thing, and I think it has been improved over years, that those projects are really open. This means you can grab the code, mm -hmm. just read the documentation online on Wiki, get online support on a mailing list, RIC, and so on. And you can build your stuff like uh, you will build uh, your Raspberry Pi uh, operating system for your home system, whatever. We are not that special. We are using the, and, and to my, my uh, experience, those people are open source people and they can provide the, f the, the feedback. In, in the past, maybe it was different because uh, Development was done behind door, and it was a code release on uh, at the right time at the given place, and so on. Now, yep. now it's more the not more the case. Every code is pushed online on uh, on a reviewing system in real time. You can discuss on mailing list. So that's the, I, I, if I have a message to say that uh, you have to now to prove it's not to uh, do more of that. OK, great. Thank you. Does anyone from the audience care to close the session by saying something new and different and exciting? Yes, sir. Hello. Hi. Um, I'm, uh, I work for Collabora. And, uh, we are a consultancy company, and we have a, uh, also a automotive distribution. We know who you are. Go on. Well, it's called Apertis, yes. and I'd like to invite you guys and people in the audience to check it out, apertis.org, and maybe we can find some common ground that we can share or improve our, our processes, development, software, whatever. 
Sure. So okay, so just a simple question for you, coming back to the um, not reinventing the wheel, and I'm as guilty of reinventing wheels as everybody else, so don't take this personally, but why did Apertis happen when there's both AGL and Geneva? Um, there, I think there was not uh, any base system usable at the time okay. for coming from Geneva. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure about AGL, or the history about that. I, I know there was some, at the, the time it was Migo, Mm -hmm. when, and then yeah, yeah. Migo yeah. closed the business because the uh, manufacturer behind it shut down, and then there was some something going yeah. on. And 20 seconds, come on. Yeah, and then I there I was this was the manufacturer need, uh, needing a uh, base system, so they just yeah. decided to go ahead and, and implement Great. something. Okay. Because they need, really Super. need something. Thank you for the answer, and thank you for mentioning Apertus. Oh. Apertus.org. Walt, you haven't got any uh, time, but if we can throw the one, microphone at you. I would like to say one more thing. It's you, you really short. Time. We're it's, out of time. Is it, uh, it's automotive is special because it's a safety critical system. True. Yes. So agreed. Yeah. Walt, come on. A year ago, we had a GDP. Geneva at the point at that time demo platform that was completely languishing, was going nowhere. A year ago, AGL had virtually no commits to its uh, Git repositories. We had just started. So if you look at the progress that we've made both in Geneva and in AGL from a year ago, it's just tremendous in my opinion. And that yep. really is the biggest change from a year ago. Yep. We have a lot more collaboration going on industry-wide. And uh, that would be my uh, final okay. point. Walt, I appreciate it. Thank you very much for, for saying that. Okay, folks, it's been great. Thank you. Oh, one more. Pavel hasn't spoken before. Let's, let's get Pavel speaking. I owe you a beer, young man. Thank you very much. So, no offense to nobody on the panel, but... We will take some. <laughs> please, don't. But uh, I believe that we can talk about success of open source and automotive when those people on the panel are working for OEMs, tier ones, and at least 50% of the auditory okay. is also. Yep. Until then, we are just trying to push, but we are still not there yet. To be fair, I didn't try at all to get OEM or tier one members to the panel. You know, it, it, it's just easier speaking to, to people who are very active and visible in the community. So literally all of these guys have been on the mailing list and on IRC. Um, but I, I completely take your point, and if this runs again next year, I think with the help of people like Walt um, and some of the other people I know, it should be possible to get that the panel could have very much more um, a, an engineering representative from several OEMs and, and tier ones. And I think actually that's a very good message that I, I'm willing to take back if people are going to attend for next year. And on that note, we really are out of time. Uh, I thank you very much for, for listening and participating and hope to see you next year. Thank you.